Good afternoon, good late afternoon. I'm very honored actually to be able to conclude that day. Uh, very pleased that uh, Materiel has allowed me to, to do so. I will represent today, I, I'm the CEO of one of the brands of Dassault System called Katia, uh, but I will represent the company today. I will represent Dassault System. I am actually in charge of uh, research and development, uh, reporting to the executive committee for all the 3D oriented applications, SolidWorks, Katia, Simulia, etc. Uh, and I would like to, uh, to introduce my speech by uh, leveraging what uh, Wilfried van Kren has mentioned this morning, which is uh, 3D printing is not a technology. 3D printing is actually an experience. Uh, what does an experience mean? An experience means that 3D printing will affect how you imagine, how you create, how you design a part, an assembly, or a system. It will affect, of course, the way you're simulating it, uh, science-based simulation. It will affect, of course, the way you manufacture. It will also impact the way you go to market and the business model you are going to apply to uh, what you're producing. So um, this is what we call an innovation spiral, starting from imagination to the final system in operation. And so the title is a little bit misleading. It's not only about design. It's about the whole experience from imagination to the product in operation. Uh, hence the title that I've selected. And we at Dassault Systems, we believe in order to achieve that very efficiently, we need a platform. And this is why we have invested in what is called the 3D Experience Platform. And uh, the 3D Experience Platform basically is represented by the compass that you see here. We have four quadrants. The West Quadrant 3D allows you to design, to model, not only model the shape, but model the fit, model the function. The South part of it allows to create scenarios, a 3D printing scenario on a given machine, for example, with a given load condition, and simulate uh, virtually what will happen in the real life. The II on the uh, right side means uh, information intelligence. We know that during, we are currently still all learning on 3D printing. So we know that we are going to gather from the production, from the real world, a big amount of data. And the platform is here to allow to exploit uh, and to uh, uh, model the big data that is going to be generated by the worldwide usage on 3D printing. And finally, the north part of the quadrant is called social because we believe that in order to have the right 3D printing experience, you need to pull the best people, the best pieces of software, the best services. This is why you need this social collaboration environment. So a little bit an update on the, on, on the company. We have one aim. Is the aim is to provide business and people um, 3D experience universes. It's to allow you to create sustainable innovations that is harmonizing product, nature, and life. This is what we are betting our companies for the past six years when we announced the 3D Experience platform. So our company is uh, scientific, 80% uh, are PhDs in our companies, so a very strong scientific background. And um, actually, what I would like to comment here, we have 15,000 people together. Just to give you an example, we acquired a company specialized in material modeling and simulation. Uh, located in San Diego. The name of this company was Acceleris. It became what we call Biovia. This brand will allow us, will allow you, to model the microstructures uh, of the material and to obtain out of that the uh, macro behavior and the characteristic of new materials. Because in 3D printing, at the same time, you are designing the material and you are designing the parts and the assemblies. So we have also a big network of partners uh, researchers, research uh, centers, just to name some of them in 3D printing, we are working with uh, Oak Ridge National uh, Laboratory in the United States, and they have been printing the biggest tooling ever using 3D printing. With metal printing, it took two months, it's a blade, it's a, it's a big uh, uh, blade uh, tooling. It took uh, uh, two days to 3D print, as it took two months in order to be able to do metal cutting with traditional methods. We're working a lot with aviation company and with an institute called National Institute for Aviation Research, NIAR. Uh, we have a strong partnership with them for metal printing 
uh, new technology. I, will, I could name some others, you know, Singapore Additive Manufacturing Innovation Center or uh, the Japanese National R&D Center for Medical Devices. Uh, we are a company oriented towards innovation. And of course, we are in discussion with Materialize to see how we could leverage uh, the strengths of both companies. So these are some of our uh, leading customers. And I put this on, on a slide because uh, these are representing the main customers in uh, 12 industries. Some of them are our partners. We work with them to innovate in 3D printing. If I ask the audience, you know, how many of those companies are currently implementing uh, 3D printing um, process? And again, not a technology, they are implementing what I call the 3D printing experience. It's around 80% of those companies. So, uh, actually, we're serving a global design community. Uh, you need to know that, uh, uh, roughly speaking, Dassault whole system, all the 12 brands together have uh, 15 million users. In the design space, in the design community, I'm representing here Katia and SolidWorks, it's around 5 million of users. And again, what we want to be able to do is to those 5 million of users get access to a 3D printing experience as quickly as possible. So in fact, we know where we are. We have been working on design and manufacturing since uh, several years. And we are here today, I'm here also today to continue the dialogue with, with uh, of course, this network of professionals who have been building. So this is uh, usually a little bit provocative, what I'm going to tell here. We heard a lot about this morning about product design, product manufacturing. We are today entering in the experience economy. And designing a product is not longer enough. You need to be able to design the whole experience. Uh, if you look at Tesla, for example, who is one of our customers, the experience starts when you enter inside the uh, dealership and how you are going, in fact, to, uh, to uh, customize your car for your own purpose. So they are using the platform to do that. Then, of course, the driving experience. When you go on board of a Tesla, you have a computer with a program on board. This is also uh, designed using our platform. And one of the most critical part now in those electric cars are the uh, support that are going to uh, carry the batteries. And most of the support are 3D printed to today. So this is one typical example where we are helping uh, Tesla in order to achieve uh, quality and efficiency of the car. Last but not least, you know that the Tesla can be charged in uh, less than 10, 10 to 12 minutes using a power charger. And this affects the whole infrastructure uh, of the city and the infrastructure of, um, of the landscape. So they are also uh, modeling this whole experience. So basically, Tesla is not buying, selling a product, it's selling an experience. And the 3D experience platform is there to achieve so. Now, let me give you some examples of uh, uh, the work that we have been achieving in the past and where we believe today uh, 3D printing is taking off today. So, for example, did you know that uh, 17,000 fashion, home goods, and lifestyle brands uh, leverage our solution to bring new products and experience to consumer worldwide. This is one of the key takeaways here. You know also that the majority of the new consumer uh, electronic products, the ones that get awards at CES, are being currently designed with our solution. I think you looked at the last CES, you understood that Faraday Future has been announcing a new electric autonomous car. This, of course, was designed with uh, the solutions as well. We see a big push as well uh, in the uh, architecture and construction industry. Uh, I will show you later a pavilion that has been built, a very organic pavilion that has been built in Florida. Uh, it's uh, around uh, six, seven meter high. It's a kiosk where uh, magicians play music. It was completely 3D printed, designed with Katia and 3D printed with uh, the 3D printing solution that the Oak Ridge National Laboratory provides. And uh, every 2.5 seconds, 
an airplane takes off with already some 3D printed parts on board that were designed with uh, our solution. So I think it's better, instead of showing that, that I uh, present to you a customer testimonial that is speaking how they foresee the implementation of the 3D printing experience in their premises. Let's listen to them. Le groupe Safran est un groupe de haute technologie euh, dédié à l'aéronautique, le spatial, la défense et la sécurité. En 2014, le chiffre d'affaires de Safran a été de 15,4 milliards d'euros. La fabrication additive est, est devenue extrêmement importante dans le monde industriel. Elle permet de nous libérer des contraintes de la fabrication actuelle en nous donnant accès à des intégrations de fonctions et à des possibilités de, de nouveaux concepts géniaux. Les pièces nouvelles sont, sont extrêmement euh, importantes et vont bénéficier de façon évidente de ces nouvelles technologies. Les enjeux que revêt euh, cette technologie euh, sont gigantesques. La continuité numérique euh, est un atout, est un enjeu euh, extrêmement important pour nous. Le matériau est conçu avec la pièce et par conséquent, tous les choix qui sont faits tout au long de la chaîne sont importants, depuis la poudre jusqu'au balançage de la pièce dans la machine. C'est pour ça que si je devais exprimer un rêve euh, numérique qui partirait de la poudre pour aller jusqu'à la programmation de la machine avec des capacités de rebouclage euh, sur la conception. La notion de plateforme que Dassault System est en train de lancer me fait percevoir un outil important. Elle va permettre l'accès à des outils, à des données. Elle va mettre en relation des partenaires internes, externes. Elle va contribuer à la capitalisation de, de la connaissance. La continuité numérique est extrêmement importante également pour les aspects sécurité, traçabilité, qualité. Et elle va également en tout cas, c'est ma perception, euh, permettent d'accélérer euh, la diffusion de, de l'information et donc de la technologie. Ce sera sans doute un atout pour nous. So, you could leave the room at that moment because uh, basically I'm going to explain now how the dream of this gentleman, which was expressed two years ago, uh, we uh, start to realize it in operation. So. I didn't know there was sound on this one, so forget it for the moment. Uh, our strategy is based on five pillars. Uh, not only the strategy, but the solutions we're delivering. The first one is what we call in silico material science, meaning being able to model up to the microstructure, the material, and understand the behavior uh, that it will have when it's going to transform from the powder to the metal, for example, during the uh, making process. And uh, we have, as I told you, a complete lab working on this topic called Biovia, located in San Diego. The second is the revolution in terms of design. The world of 3D printing, the new world of making, completely unleashes the design. And traditional CAD method does not work anymore. The way designers are designing parts and assemblies today is based on their experience about material removal mainly. We have already seen a transformation in the past year in composites. You would not do composites design in a traditional um, uh, CAD environment. Uh, we have created a dedicated solution for composite, which was the first additive layered manufacturing. And we are reproducing now for uh, 3D printing. And we strongly believe also in automation in that domain, moving away from interactive applications. I will show you an example later on. On the manufacturing, there are two aspects we want to deal with and where we are delivering solution. The process definition, the machine definition, um, as well as what we call the shop floor production planning, uh, up to optimize the capacity of a multi-machine shop floor, multi-3D printing machine shop floor. And uh, that's what we call number four global production system. 
And I have a surprise for you, which is uh, number five, which is how we are going to federate that around a 3D experience marketplace for additive manufacturing. That I'm going to announce a little bit later on. So speaking about number one, what we call in silico material uh, sciences. So the topic here is to be able to model the microstructure of uh, the powder that you are going to use and from that uh, modeling, derive the macro structure behavior of the material that the engineers are going to use to design their parts. So here we are using multi-scale, multi-physics uh, simulation and modeling in order to understand the behavior of this material. So here, for example, it's an, uh, I have a small video to run here. Um, it's an example of a polymer microstructure. And uh, well, from the molecular behavior, we get instantaneously, we can obtain macroscopic and macro characteristics. So what are the applications of that, of that, uh, let's say, uh, model? Well, it's the material behavior between, be, uh, sorry, during the making process. For example, the heat transfer. How will the heat propagate uh, during the uh, material deposit and material fusion? Where are the residual stresses uh, of the, uh, how can we predict those residual stress in order to adapt the part shapes in order to remove those residual stress? Then uh, simulate the part uh, assembly in operation. Uh, today we are building in 3D printing assemblies that are connecting the fuselage to the engine. It's a critical part assembly in the aerospace, so we need to be able to predict how the assembly, how the system will uh, behave in operation. That's based on uh, uh, material science. And of, of course, last but not least, uh, the detection of defects, which we are already, uh, is already in operation in some of our customers. Porosity, understand how an anisotropic material will behave, and uh, uh, delamination, for example, those, uh, let's say, uh, phenomenon that could occur uh, for 3D printed part. So that's the first pillar, material science. The second one is what we call function-driven generative design. We are entering, in fact, in the age of what we call the software robots that are uh, represented here by those little white ghosts. Actually, those are robots. We have been developing uh, scientific software robots in order to take a, a typical mechanical engineer he has several KPIs to fulfill. Uh, he needs to design in a given workspace in a 3D environment. He needs to, of course, um, minimize the weight. He has some KPIs for production cost. So it's an over-constrained environment. And if you take into account now that you have several ways of producing the part, cast and forge, milling, additive manufacturing, the help of robot is uh, highly appreciated by our users. I claim here that we need to leave the area of CAD, known as computer-aided design, and enter in the area of CAD, known as cognitive augmented design. And why is this happening? Because of the 3D printing experience. This could never have happened without uh, the 3D printing experience. So just to show a little bit how it works, here is a short uh, video. So this is uh, one of the typical process we're applying. So you're a designer. Of course, you have a concept part. That, and here it's a concept assembly. And in fact, you're defining what are called the functional regions. That means how the part will be uh, bolted, for example, or riveted in operation. So you define basically the scenario. The designer, it speaks the mechanical language. So you can use riveting, you can use fastening, you can use bolting. So you just define, I would say, how the part will be in operation and what are the constraints the part should be using. And the system then computes the robots, those little robots, they compute for you alternative shapes. What you see here is not a mesh, of course. What you see here is an actual geometry that is really how you would see a, a standard CAD model. You can then operate on it uh, and, 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 and model, uh, continue to model out of it. Because we technologically have connected optimization simulation and geometric modeling. 
So already here, some of our customers are enjoying that solution. Um, the gains uh, in terms of design time, productivity is a factor of four. So you are capable to design four times more parts than you did in the past. The weight reduction, roughly speaking, is between 40 and 70%. So we have one typical customer in the aerospace who took that solution and who transformed some of their traditional CAD users into uh, these cognitive augmented design users. And they are enjoying those benefits and there are parts already flying uh, which were 3D printing. By the way, we are not optimizing, uh, designing parts only, but assemblies as well. So that's for uh, number two, um, what I call now uh, cognitive augmented design. Now let's move into the uh, manufacturing and the physics-based simulation. So uh, there are two topics here that I want to address. First, we want to be able to uh, simulate, of course, the 3D printing machines, but also a, a, a complete shop floor, a complete 3D printing shop floor. So of course, we are providing what we call a virtual model of the shop floor and a virtual model of uh, the machine. The virtual model of the machine, we have standard ones from the catalog, and we are working with uh, machine builders in order to get those uh, accurate uh, virtual model of the machines. And as well, you can, of course, adapt this catalog to what I call the serialization of, of your machine. That means how the machine, which one it's implemented in your shop floor with some customized characteristics. Maybe I can launch the video at that time to show you what it is about. So we have a partnership program with uh, many machine builders. I could name Rennie Shaw, for example, uh, who is one of them. And here you see what Rennie Shaw is providing us as the virtual model of the machine. The virtual model of the machine contains as well the slicer. There is a generic slicer that the system is providing, but also the machine builders are providing slicers themselves. So virtually, you are able to control at that time really uh, the uh, making process. And you are going to be able to ensure uh, repeatability, traceability, and quality, like uh, Mr. Thomas from Safran explained to, to us. So this is how I believe there was a question this morning. How big are we going to democratize 3D printing? This is one of the answer, uh, being able to predict, to repeat the same process again and again, to capitalize the big data, and continue to, to learn. What you've seen as well is that during the machining simulation, we are able actually to simulate all the multi-physics processes that are happening based on material science. The last part, uh, what we call the global, it's to optimize the global capacity of your shop floor. Uh, it's to maximize the usage of each of the machine uh, some machines sometimes are under maintenance, so you need to be able to predict how you are going to balance your whole shop floor. We call this machining operation, sorry, uh, shop floor operation. We are able uh, as well with this to uh, uh, simulate the logistics on how the powder, for example, will be brought to the, to the machine at the right time. So this is basically also there, and we can see in the video here, you are able here to plan also the inspection process quality, uh, and you know that the inspection quality has two facets, uh, the, the quality of the process itself of making, and the quality of the resulting parts and assemblies. Again, it's at the end a question also of how the system can handle all the big data that are going to be generated by the millions of parts that are going to be printed uh, in the world. Last but not least, so this is, uh, I would say, uh, the fifth pillar of our, of, of, of our um, strategy. The problem we want to solve and the challenge that our customers are meeting is how do I get the right expertise in 3D printing at the right time for each step of the 3D printing experience? How to design? How to set up the machine? What slicer should I use? What uh, uh, machining process should I use? So really here, it's to be able to have an immediate access 
to a worldwide network ecosystem to bridge the gap in your company. So in fact, for that, very simple, you need a trusted uh, intermediation platform. And this is what we have developed in order to give access to a trust trusted network of experts, service providers, software providers. Materialize is one of those. Uh, many of you want to get access to expertise and we believe that making you know a call like in the old way you know and have people on site is something that does not scale this is why we created this uh, what we call the 3d printing marketplace so and in this marketplace it's very simple we want to take a full 3d approach so you uh, the customers as a buyer of the service will express the requirement in 3D. Then uh, you will dri be dri driven in a 3D window during the whole process of intermediation with the, what we call the seller who is going to provide you the service. And the platform will systematically check the consistency between the result and the request that you have been placing uh, in the order. And uh, well, at last but not least, we have in the platform everything to manage the transaction. So it's moving towards what we call the new experience economy, the new uh, trading platform economy. This is what we have been delivering. So basically, first thing we want to do is to connect our DASO system users, Katia, SolidWorks, 5 million, to people like Materialize in order to provide the best uh, printed 3D printed part, extremely high quality printed part at the end. Our ambition is to do what Amazon has done for B2C for retail, to do it for the 3D printing experience for B2B, business to business. And that it's not just PowerPoint, it's already in operation. We are currently, uh, we have selected some of our users and companies to go on this platform and to try it out. Let's see it in operation. The 3D printing service connects designers and manufacturing engineers with industrial 3D printing service providers around the world. We will start with the experience for service providers to get registered. First, they are able to declare the offers following the industry standards. In additive manufacturing, this is about three pillars. Printers and materials, including tolerances, capacities, and turnaround time. Finishing, for instance, sanding, polishing, or heat treatment. Those are declared for each supported printing technology and each material. Services. Here we speak about delivery services, additional services such as engineering or geometry optimization, or granted certifications. We have built referentials for all that, making offer declaration very easy. Then, we empower them with marketing solutions to promote their know-how and expertise. In a few clicks, they build a showroom including customer cases, offers, equipments, skills, reference customers, etc. This will give them visibility by search engines like Google. Not only, the 3D printing service gives them access to a wide and qualified audience, it also lets them operate globally with the management of the end-to-end -end transaction, including currencies, payments, taxes, and billing. We also collect regulatory and banking information as well as let them manage their own contracts to frame the legal aspects of the service they deliver to their customers. Finally, they will benefit from a business dashboard to give them clear insight about their business, the user's behaviors, and their offer's competitiveness. We will now move to the experience to request a print. It starts from the same public website where you can browse the service providers or select the content to print or you can go straight from design to print with Katia or SolidWorks Immersive Access. The specifications are done in a very formal and process-driven way, using the industry standard for additive manufacturing. Print process, material, geometry tolerance, finishing options, delivery dates, etc. A key differentiator of our service is that we are making sure the print will be successful by detecting and fixing potential issues in the geometry quality or in the design rules. In this example, the geometry walls are too thin for the selected specifications. We see where the issues are and it takes one more click to automatically fix them. 
The service is using analytics to suggest the most relevant providers for each request. This is based on KPIs such as measured experience on similar parts, materials, processes, etc. We then browse the list of suggested service providers and easily access to meaningful details about them. From there, a service provider is selected and the request is finalized and sent. The buyer and the service provider enter in the 3D bidding phase. This is a necessary step to adjust the specifications, the delay and the price using 3D as a language. In this example, the service provider proposes a couple of modifications on the finishing option and delivery date. He also enters a precise quotation. During 3D bidding, each update is formally captured and historized, avoiding any mistake due to miscommunication. This is another value of the service. Once an agreement is found, the buyer confirms the order using the global payments method available on the marketplace. From this point, the specifications are frozen and the order will be processed and delivered by the service provider. Again, each step is formally captured with real-time notifications to the buyer. Finally, the buyer confirms the reception and this triggers the payout of the service provider. As you see, we have streamlined the entire workflow from request to order delivery. So, as a conclusion, we are going to stay uh, today very humble. Uh, we are entering in this new world, in this new area. We are transforming our solution and we are not going to do it alone. This is why we had today also uh, additional meetings with our colleagues from Materialize to understand how we could cooperate in the frame of this marketplace. So the takeaway today for uh, additive manufacturing, what is our journey to additive manufacturing, is first of all this uh, 3D experience marketplace to connect people, to connect software services, and to connect the processes in order for the, the sellers to promote their services and uh, in order to the customers, our customers and other uh, CAD uh, customers to reach the best network of uh, industrial qualified partners. And of course, on the other side, we uh, start to have a serious uh, solution uh, for additive manufacturing. So to create, discover new materials, to uh, make innovative design. I think you've seen some examples of that to control the production and to optimize the supply chain. This is a journey we're in, and uh, hopefully next year we're going to have on stage our colleague from Safran who tells that everything is today in operation in this company. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for letting me close this uh, event.